everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel my name's Lucy and today I've got a book haul so this is the second book haul that I am doing in 2023 and it's only April I mean I guess you could say I am doing it in the second quarter but I was hoping to do it at the end of the quarter rather than the, at the beginning but hey ho <laughs> so I have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve physical books to talk to you about, and one audiobook to talk you through. So let's quickly do the audiobook first to get it out of the way, and then we can move on with the physical books. Uh, but this audiobook is Teach Me by Olivia Dade. Now, I have already read this book, so I can give you more of a wrap up view of the book rather than just a synopsis. But in this one, we are following two teachers. We are first following Rose as she is in her 40s. She works in a small town and she's a history teacher. And then our love interest, Martin, moves into the small town and is also a history teacher. And there creates some tension between them two as uh, Rose has to give up some of her classes, which she is not happy about doing. They strike up a very healthy <laughs> relationship together and they fall in love very quickly and it's very sweet to watch them and very nice to see Martin like the guy as a cinema role um so that was that was lovely to to listen to and Rose is she's described as this ice queen who has her guard up um they are both in their 40s and they've both been divorced and Martin has a teenage daughter um, and throughout this book they basically learn a lot of life lessons about what sort of relationship that they want and they communicate a lot <laughs> with each other to try and find a way in which that they can do that um, together. So yeah, I read that for the Kiss and Tell book club, which is book club run by my friends Kelsey, Dorothy, Jenny and Zoe. Um, so and that was their March pick, I believe. Okay, and now we're moving on to all of the physical reads. The first book I've got is Do No Harm by Jack Jordan. This is a medical thriller. And oof, I know I don't really read a lot of thrillers, but this one just grabbed me. Um, I first saw this on Instagram and the whole do no harm motto of like, you know, that um, I think it's Florence Nightingale, um, what's it called? Vow that um, medical professionals take and they, they, they vow to do no harm and always to have like the patient's best interest at, at heart. Um, I really love that sort of like literal um representation of it on the cover like it's literally you've used a scalpel to cross out no and it is do harm like like the the cover the cover is covering the cover is covering what can i say but this we are following a surgeon and her child has been taken and she's been given a choice and it's either to kill a patient on the operating table or lose her son forever and it's it, i mean that's all i need to know about it really like that's such a god awful situation so i'm intrigued to see what's happening with that the next book i have is actually the third in the series which is very apt of me to do really um it's the bullet that missed by richard osman this is the third book in the thursday murder club series um I'm not going to read synopsis this because I haven't even read the first book yet but I've been collecting the whole series because my mum has been reading it herself and I will eventually read the series but I believe that this book still carries on following all of the people who were in the retirement village from the first book and it's a murder mystery type story. Wow, I'm really in my thriller murder mystery vibes, it seems, because uh, the next book is Marple and it's by a variety of authors. It's 12 new stories, 12 great writers and one Agatha Christie. So if you don't know, Marple is a character written by Agatha Christie and Marple is uh, an old lady <laughs> who it seems to always be solving crimes that happen on her watch. Um, I haven't actually read any of the original Marvel stories and I haven't even read anything by Agatha Christie, like n none of the Praro series, anything really. But 
um, the authors that have written the, these 12 short stories were the reason why I picked it up because let me let me tell you a couple of the names Lee Bardugo has written some Alyssa Cole Lucy Foley uh, like Karen N McManus has written a story Ruth Ware so it's kind of like all the big buzzword thriller people have written a short story so I wanted to pick this up and also I think it will help me get into more the thriller mood with short stories rather than a full length tale so yes the next book I have is Last Violent Call by Chloe Gong I did mention this briefly at the end of my last book haul saying that I had pre-ordered it so now the official hardback copy has arrived at my doorstep and it's such a beautiful beautiful cover this is the exclusive signed edition i haven't even actually looked oh yeah there it is so this is two novellas um and they surround the events of foul lady fortune and they follow a familiar cast of characters from these violent delights i haven't read um foul lady fortune yet so i'm not going to continue reading the rest of the synopsis but once i have read foul lady fortune i will be reading the next book is one of my highly anticipated releases of the year and it's a sequel and it's Immortality A Love Story by Dana Schwartz. This was a disappointment to me, I've already read it and I've tabbed the book very sparingly because I didn't really enjoy it but hey ho, <laughs> you can see more of my thoughts in my wrap up if you want to watch that. But this book follows on from the first book where we met Hazel and Jack. Hazel is uh, a young society gal in 1800s, early 1800s, Regency period, Edinburgh. And she has dreams of becoming a surgeon. If you know anything about the time period, you know that women weren't allowed to do shit. So her aspirations of becoming a surgeon are very, very difficult. And then she meets Jack, who is a grave digger. And so she strikes up a bargain with him so that he can dig up cadavers for her so she can practice becoming a surgeon. Um, we're going to the second book following Hazel's adventures, going on to being Princess Charlotte's personal physician and everything that snowballs from there. And the next book is How to Sell a Haunted House by Greta Hendrix. Yes, I know, I still need to take the sticker off. I'm very bad. I always leave stickers on because I don't trust myself to get them off without ripping anything. Um, but this is also signed by the author. It's the Waterstones exclusive, I believe. And we've got a little ghost with his signature and it's got some blue sprayed edges. Now, this book. All I know is that we are following a brother and a sister. I think predominantly the sister, I don't know, I haven't read the book yet, um, as they have to come together to sell their deceased parents' house. And it's all about how the house doesn't want to be sold and that their mother had a whole collection of dolls. And I believe that the dolls may be haunted as well as the house. And yeah, it's going to be a bit, a bit, ugh, really, is the way I descri can describe it. It's going to be very classic classic horror i should say with a haunted house so i'm really excited to actually pick this one up i should be picking it up this month so fingers crossed that i can stick to my tbr the next book is a book i have already read and it is secretly yours by tessa bailey this book i tabbed as well i'm really tab really tabbing i'm really enjoying the tabbing experience of tabbing my books lately uh, this was a major disappointment for me though i will say really did not like this one um but in this one we're following Hallie uh, she lives in a small town in Napa Valley California wine country if you will and she is a gardener and she discovers that her old childhood crush Julian is back in town living at his parents estate or or vineyard they own a vineyard <laughs> Voss vineyard and he's back for the foreseeable future to write his fic first fiction novel and Hallie stages a meet cute and ends up gardening his garden for him uh, to make sh basically get back in his life and to try and see what's happening with her crush and she ends up drunkenly 
uh, writing him secret admirer letters, hence why it's called Secretly Yours, she signs the letters Secretly Yours, etc. Um, and so it's about their romance. And I, <laughs> I didn't enjoy it. It's, sh Hallie was the most childish, childish, like 30 year old I've ever met. And I really could not stand her. And Julian, Julian's a very straight laced, anxiety riddled uh, human. And Hallie is very chaotic, whimsical, flirty, vacacious person. And I did not understand how their personalities were ever going to sync up with each other. Um, it's like the extreme version of Opposites Attract. And I didn't, I didn't get it. The only good points about this book are its anxiety rep and its grief rep. Um, Hallie recently lost her grandmother and Julian suffers with panic attacks. So those are the only two good things I would say about this book. Another Grady Hendrix on this list is Horror Store. This, <laughs> this is basically supposed to be like an Ikea catalogue type book. And we are essentially uh, following the staff members of Orcs Furniture Superstore in Cleveland, Ohio, and something very strange is happening to the store. Um, so every day they come in to find broken bookshelves, shattered water goblets, smashed wardrobes, uh, and sales are down, and security cameras are revealing nothing. So we are following three employees who volunteer who volunteered to work a nine hour dust till dawn shift um so i think it's going to be a very traditional haunted house type book where the storeroom while we're following the three employees is going to be haunted and they're going to have a very very restless night in the store so this is going to be this is going to be interesting for me i think i'm going to enjoy it i really hope i do and a fantasy book for you guys is God Killer by Hannah Cannon. Uh, this is just a stunning cover. Um, this is the Waterstones edition. And I just really have to show you these end pages because they are stunning. Look at that. It's just absolutely stunning. This, I will read you the synopsis of because I'm not entirely sure of what it's about. But it says, you are not welcome here, God Killer. Kissin's family were killed by a zealot of a fire god. Now she makes a living killing gods and enjoys it. That is, until she finds a god she can't kill. Skeddy, a god of white liars, has somehow bound himself to a young noble and they are both on the, on the run from unknown assassins. Joined by a disillusioned knight on a secret quest, they must travel to the ruined city of Blendrandon, Blendrandon where the last of the wild gods reside to each beg a favour. Pursued by demons and in the midst of civil war, they will all face a reckoning. Something is rotting at the heart of the kingdom and only they could be the ones to stop it. So a good old fashioned fantasy quest book. Um, I'm really excited for this actually. And it just looks so beautiful. I just couldn't resist picking this up in store. Uh, another, Another anticipated release of mine was The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi by Shannon Shakaborty. I am such a fangirl for the David Bad trilogy. I had to pick up this book as soon as I could and I found it in Waterstones and I love this edition of it. I'm not the biggest fan of the American cover um, as I don't know that feels more middle grade to me whereas this feels more like on the cusp of YA to adult and I just prefer that I don't know but in this one it's essentially a pirate story and it says Amina al Safari has survived backstabbing rogues vengeful ven merchant princes several husbands and one actual demon to retire peacefully with the family to a life of piety motherhood and absolutely nothing that hints of the supernatural but when she's offered a job no bandit can refuse, she jumps at the chance for one final adventure with her old crew that will make her a legend and offers a fortune that will secure her and her family's future forever. Yet the deeper Amina dives, the higher the stakes, for there's always risk in wanting to become a legend, to seize one last chance at glory, to survive, to savour just a bit more power, and the price might be your very soul. So I think I'm not the biggest fan of pirate stories, but you know what? I think Sharon and Shakaborty can do it for me. You know, um, 
I think it will be interesting to see a older fe female character at the heart of fantasy pirate story and I'm really intrigued to see how it's executed. Okay, so the penultimate book that I want to show you is For Her Consideration by Amy Spaulding. This was the Afterlight Aluma Crate book for March and I really enjoyed this book actually. It's really, really pretty. I will say my favourite thing about it is the uh, hardback. Like, isn't that just stunning? Um, so this is a romance book as it is the afterlight subscription <laughs> but the synopsis says since a crushing breakup three years ago nina has written romance friends of her dreams of script writing out of her life but a surprise meeting organized by ari a young actress on everyone's radar stirs up all kinds of feelings nina thought she'd deleted for good ari is sexy out and proud and a serious control freak according to nina's boss when Ari tells Nina she should start writing again, Nina suddenly finds it less scary to revisit her abandoned life than seriously consider that she is flirting with her. Between reconnecting with her old crew and working on a new script, a relationship with a movie star seems like something she'll definitely mess up. But what could be more worth the risk? So I think a sapphic Hollywood romance would be just the perfect summer read and I'm excited to get to this very soon. And the last book, again, you guys will be absolutely chuckling at me. I bought Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson, which is the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive. Um, and yes, I don't own Earth Oathbringer yet, the third book. And I'm still only 200 pages into Wave Kings. Um, but I have ordered Oathbringer, so it should be coming soon. But the reason I did this is that I book, I book, <laughs> I bought this on Book Depository, and as we all know, it's sadly closing. And I wanted the American version. Uh, reason being, I wanted the book in one volume. I really hated that the UK editions, each book in the Stormlight Archive series, is split into two parts. And I just, this is so frustrating to me. I feel like I'm reading two books when I'm actually only reading one. So I wanted to buy the, buy the American edition. And also this is so floppy. And I, I don't know, I just really prefer this binding. This binding is so much nicer than the UK editions. Like you would never see this flop on <laughs> an English or UK um, paperback. It would never happen. So, that is the reason why I bought it. And I bought it this early because of book depository closing. I would have bought this when I was ready to read it, but I had to buy it early for reasons already stated. Um, but yes, those are all the books <laughs> that I have bought recently. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books, would you recommend them? Let me know. Uh, let me know what the last book that you bought was. Um, if you would like to leave me a comment but you don't know what to comment, please can you leave me a... Ooh, what should we do? You know what, let's do the book stack emoji because I have a lot of books actually that I was not anticipating to have. So yeah, that is the end of the video, guys. I hope you're all safe and well, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!